All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about Pokemon, the Pokemon company more uh, specifically in this one because they're the ones who are actually behind all of this. But usually uh, we don't see stuff like this too often. So that's why it's really weird. It kind of came out of left field when this news started breaking. And there's a little bit of a misconception and I kind of fell for it at the beginning too, uh, surrounding this entire situation. So I wanna clarify before we get any further into the video, uh, because a lot of people were reporting this and talking about it. Nintendo is not responsible or involved in this situation to my knowledge at all. Now, when people started talking about this the other day on social media, a lot of people were saying, oh, look at this uh, YouTube strike that happened. Why is Nintendo going after these people? Why is Nintendo issuing these strikes? Which kind of makes sense because Nintendo has their own shady copyright history in the past before, but this is all regarding the Pokemon company itself. So most people they don't really know how this works so the pokemon entity as it as it is right is actually owned a portion of it is owned by nintendo a portion of it's owned by the pokemon company right so they've got it split up it's not like one full property that one company owns right there's different companies with ownership of the pokemon company so that's who's actually responsible for this but in the last couple of days there has been this new massive wave of youtube copyright strikes being put on people's youtube YouTube channels because of a very common, I would say, type of video, right? So basically people who've uploaded modded Pokemon in any way. So the first one we're going to be taking a look at here, this one is the YouTuber Noah J456. I'm sure a lot of you know who that is, but I wanted to take a look at this a little closer because this actually really kind of tells us even more. Like it's not just the Pokemon companies going around and copyright striking people's videos, but this is evidence of, for instance, the fact that the company manually striked this video and manually submitted this claim. So this wasn't some automated system or anything. And you can tell because number one, they claimed the entire video. Number two, it named specific content used, including Pikachu, Gengar, Meowth, Mewtwo. It even has the contact info and whatnot there as well. So I want to just real quickly explain for those of you who don't make YouTube videos, you don't really know the difference, right? Between a copyright claim and a copyright strike. So it would be one thing if the Pokemon company was going around and they were copyright claiming people's content, which I mean, honestly, I still wouldn't be like happy about it or like, I wouldn't think it's the greatest thing ever, but it would be a little more understandable. So a copyright claim is, let's say you are a company and you determine that somebody is using your copyrighted material in their YouTube content, they're not allowed to do it. Like maybe they're using one of your artist's songs or something like that, or they're using your movie or something like that, right? Well, you can issue a copyright claim. And what this does is most of the time it for a company will allow them to earn the ad revenue off of that video. So you claim the video, however much money it makes through ads and whatnot, right? You end up getting that money or you split it with the creator as a company. Now, if you copyright strike someone's channel, this is a little bit more severe. This is like an actual, I don't want to say attack because it's kind of a weighted piece of language to use, but this is kind of like throwing a punch to somebody's YouTube channel, I guess. If you get copyright strikes, it can actually prevent you from uploading content to the platform. If you get three of them, they will outright terminate your entire YouTube channel. So getting a copyright claim, it sucks, but it is not a big deal. Getting a copyright strike is channel threatening. Like that can literally ruin your career if it happens enough. So they went across and they started hitting several people on YouTube. And as you see, these appear to be like Pokemon zombies videos, at least this Noah J one was. And just to point this out too, because in my opinion, it makes it even more petty and ridiculous that this is the case. That Noah J456 video that got copyright struck here on YouTube, this video wasn't new or anything, by the way. It wasn't like he uploaded this video yesterday and they hit it or whatever as it was new. This was a apparently seven year old video that has been on YouTube for literally just years upon years. And there was no problem with it, no issues with it. And of course, as YouTube works, I mean, this this video now probably gets like 0.01% of the views that it got per day on the, than it did on the day that it came out. So like this video is seven years old. It's completely ancient, right? It's in the fucking content vault essentially of Noah J456. There is a non-zero, but a pretty small chance that most people will never see this video who are fans of him now. And for whatever reason, the Pokemon company decided seven years later that this was just breaking a 
barrier that they couldn't have broken and this was just crossing the fucking line. And so they go and, and they copyright strike the video. So if you're a YouTuber and you have played any form of like modded Pokemon COD zombies or anything like that, man, I would be on the lookout for some copyright strikes. In reality, I'd probably just get rid of those videos off of your channel, which is sad to say, but I mean, I think that's probably really the only way you can even circumvent anything like this. And really, even then, like I know most people, they think like, oh, just unlist your video or whatever. But if they already have your video URL and they can still access the video through that, which I would think the Pokemon company is capable of saving a fucking URL if it's this serious to them. But if they do that, they can still copyright strike your video, even if it's not public anymore. So I don't Oh, no, it's just a, a wild situation. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen things like this happen on YouTube. Like I said, a lot of people at first or even now seem to think that the Nintendo company is behind this whole thing. But for once, I can actually say it's not Nintendo this time. Now it's the Pokemon company. So obviously, I think that this is a really fucking stupid thing to do. I mean, not even just the fact that they're going around striking years old videos, possibly preventing YouTubers from uploading uploading content to their channels for weeks, if it goes far enough, even potentially deleting someone's YouTube account, all because they did what? They committed the horrific crime of playing Pokemon COD Zombies? Like, technically, they're not completely wrong, because, like, I mean, the video has their copyrighted material in it, because obviously the Pokemon designs and characters themselves are copyrighted by the company, but it just doesn't make any sense altogether, right? Because I feel like we already kind of had this argument with publishers and game developers over the last like 15 years here on YouTube anyway. So for whatever reason, I guess the Pokemon company feels like these Call of Duty zombies modded gameplays are, I don't know, taking attention away from Pokemon or they're taking money out of their pocket. I really don't know what their personal rationale is other than, oh, they're using Pokemon assets, but it just, it's really fucking stupid to care this much. Let's just call it for what it is. Like, even if this video just came out yesterday and like it was brand new brand new map or whatever like i really want to know what the actual material harm is to pokemon here right like if you're the pokemon company and you're looking at this situation other than just seeing like oh they used pokemon characters in a fan-made mod map right what exactly do you think happens here to your company like are they under the impression that nobody is gonna buy any of the new pokemon games because they can play modded call of duty zombies and i don't know fucking shoot pikachus with a ray gun i I mean, I really don't think that's the case. Like, Pokemon is one of the most valuable brands, assets, shows, whatever, right, of all time. Like, there is very little competition when it comes to Pokemon. They are just dominating the world, it seems like. Like, all shit like this does, really, is disenfranchise not even just the creators, but the fans in general from the show. Because, like, obviously, if you're a fan of Pokemon and you wanted to check out this video, I mean, I would think, right, as a company, you'd be happy to have people so so dedicated to your show, so dedicated to your product or whatever in this instance, right? That they're willing to go out of their way to make like fan-made custom created maps in other video games for people to play that are still reminiscent and essentially marketing your game. Like, let's be real here, right? Noah J456, he has a massive audience. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, you know, he's probably out here finding people who don't know what Pokemon is, but, you know, he uploads a video of modded Pokemon Call of Duty gameplay. It gets a million views views, right? And that's a million people who have now just been reminded, oh, hey, by the way, Pokemon exists. And like, I don't know if this is just them tripping out because I guess it's a little bit more kind of like Pal World because obviously we know earlier this year, Pal World blew up and, you know, it fucking really kind of shook Pokemon a little bit, right? We heard that they were, oh, they were looking into it to see if there was anything they could do. We've heard nothing in the months since then. So I'll just go ahead and assume that they really don't have anything on Pal World, but like, obviously with the whole guns, more adult themes or whatever in Pal World compared to normal Pokemon, I don't know if maybe they thought that, you know, this was fucking trending too far towards that or what's going on with that, but ultimately this was just completely unnecessary and not only does it make the Pokemon company look bad, but it makes 
creators like me much less likely to play or cover Pokemon topics in the future, which kind of sucks because I mean, I'm not going to say and pretend like I have a Pokemon channel or something, but I mean, I've used, for instance, like Pokemon Fire Red gameplay here on the channel before. And I don't know. I feel like if they're willing to go around copyright striking YouTubers for showing a 3D Pikachu in a Call of Duty game, they would more than happily strike somebody for playing the actual Pokemon game on YouTube. So it looks like there's a pretty good chance that that will not be happening again, as far as I'm concerned, because truth be told, like, I mean, I, I don't want to have to deal with YouTube strikes and shit like that. There's really no way to get around them other than to just wait them out, which usually takes like 30 to 90 days, depending on what or how many you've gotten. So I don't know. I'm not even going to fucking risk it. I'm not even going to try to get involved with that anymore. It just kind of sucks, but it's just a really confusing all around situation because it just from the outside perspective just actually seems like Pokemon woke up one day on the wrong side of the bed and they just decided, you know what? Fuck it. Let's, uh, let's round up all these videos and do something about it. So I don't know, man just a really odd situation does really nothing to help anybody like i mean does pokemon really make a significant amount of money or protect their intellectual property or whatever by doing this i really don't think so like it's a fucking youtube video of a call of duty zombies mod you know i don't know man it's just one of those things where i feel like there's so many more important things that they could be doing like pokemon could actually be focused on making their new games better and actually fun to play and then this kind of shit would wouldn't even be a problem in the first place because you wouldn't be worried about people replacing your fucking game with Pow World or Call of Duty Zombies maps, right? If you just made good content for the fucking Switch, right? If you just did what you were supposed to do, but I don't know. Instead, they're out here using their resources to harass YouTube content creators for videos that they made like seven fucking years ago. So I don't know, man. Really stupid situation, really unfortunate, but I wanted to cover it because I know a lot of other YouTubers watch my videos and I know a lot of people who do gameplay also watch my videos so I don't know man I would just I would watch out using anything Pokemon related in the future because apparently they have a fucking problem with it so anyway with that being said thank you guys for watching if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to Optimus make sure to check out Shoptimus down below thank you to my watch Optimus subscribers your support helps the channel tremendously and until my next video guys this is Optimus well just warning everybody about this new Pokemon Pokemon shit and signing out. And that's a wrap on this video, but big shout out to my Optimus Nation supporters. You guys are the real MVPs. For $10 a month, you get access to loads of exclusive videos and archived live streams, my members only Minecraft server where you can possibly appear in gameplay, early access to all new uploads, an invitation to the private discord, and much more.